Hi there, it's Wade McMaster here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you just a quick trick I use uh, for creating ID photos for pretty much any of my social media accounts, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, doesn't really matter. And the reason I'm actually showing this video, and uh, it's not just about simply creating a square image, but also being aware that uh, when you're creating these images, pretty much, the, pretty much all the time, they're going into circles. So uh, we need to up, be able to upload a square image, but we need to make sure that none of the information that we're putting on there is going into a circle. So what I'm actually gonna do is I've got two images here. I've got this uh, a picture of a guy who took from pexels.com, a royalty free photo and this Instagram logo. So before I get into the actual tutorial, I'm just gonna basically crop these and um, show you what we're gonna get. So I'm gonna basically start off, I'm gonna crop so let's say this is, we've got two different profile images here. We're gonna crop these. I'll show you how to do this soon, but let's add in some uh, some text or something. So let's say you've designed up your ID photo. You've created some text here. And you're basically uh, gonna be going, I right, this is my image, I'm happy with it, I'm gonna upload it to, you know, whatever profile it is I'm using. And you look at it, and at the moment you think, yeah, you know what, I'm pretty happy with that. My name is Bill. Let's add a little bit of black behind that. Oh, let's just, um, just to bring that out a little bit. Vote one, Bill. So, let's say we've got our image there, like, oh, cool. I'm happy with that, I'm gonna put that one on my Instagram, I'll put this one on my logo on my Facebook, which is very unevenly cropped. But, what we wanna do is just look at something for a second. If I get this little marquee tool here at the top and come down to ellipse, so if you can't see these, tool, look, these tools, look for the uh, any one of these and then press and hold to grab the elliptical marquee tool. And I'm gonna basically hold down shift I'm gonna go from one corner to the other and try to create a perfect square. It's not gonna be 100% perfect, but yeah, it'll do the job. Um, then I'm gonna go to select and inverse, and I'm just gonna add like a bit of white sitting over the top of it, or a bit of black, doesn't really matter. Let's invert that. You see here, if you've got a square logo and you've maxed it out too much, all of a sudden, it's cutting off the corners of that logo. And you might not realize that until you actually upload the image and go, ah, oh, and you've got to step back and you've got to basically set it up again. And then let's say we do the same thing with our My Name is Bill logo. I uh, draw another circle, nice perfect circle here. And then I simply create a new layer. I can control shift I to invert the selection. And there you go. The my name is Bill is actually now cut off. So that's uh, something that uh, we obviously want to avoid. So I've got a very quick and easy little trick. It's nothing, it's not rocket science, but it's just a nice quick and easy way of uh, dealing with the situation. I'm going to just basically undo a heap of these actions. Okay, so let's say we want to do something with this picture here. Or even this Instagram picture, we can do the same thing. What we can do is, what we need to do is make sure we create an image that has plenty of space around it, but still has content for us to cut into. If you've ever heard of the term bleed before, it's a term used in the print industry where if you have a photo on the background of say a flyer or something, you actually increase the photo beyond the bounds of the document so that when it's moved to a guillotine and cut, it cuts through the print so that, that way we don't have any edges. So the same sort of thing applies here. We want to have plenty here to cut into because we're basically essentially going to be cutting a circle but saving a square, <laughs> if that makes sense. So the simple idea is simply we're going to grab our elliptical marquee tool. We're going to hold down shift or if you don't want to hold down shift and you, or you get the opposite effect, oops. if you get the opposite effect, what you can do is turn off the uh, the fixed ratio here. So we want to keep the fixed ratio. We're going to either turn that on and then just go for it, and you get a nice square, nice uh, evenly proportioned circle. That's going to be perfectly a perfectly um, even width and height. Or you can keep it on normal, 
And instead of getting this effect, you hold down shift and it locks it. And we want to create a perfect circle. It's very important we create a perfect circle because then we're getting a better result. I can basically draw this circle and even if I miss, it doesn't really matter as long as it's larger, not smaller. While I have this selected, I can grab and just move it into position. And you see Photoshop has centered it there for me. So now I can see that this is what's in this circle is essentially what I want. So I just go up to image, crop, and there we go. You can see what's gonna get cut off and you can basically save it from there. I hit Control D, or I think it's Command D on Mac to deselect. I've got my image ready to go. I'm not losing any of the corners. So when I put it onto my social media profiles and I get that circle, it's not gonna actually cut off. We're gonna see everything inside of these, basically this little marching ant pattern. But what if we're doing it and we're gonna be doing some design work? Well, what we can do then, again, is we're going to draw our circle, line it up, I'm gonna get image and crop. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do what I did before. I'm just gonna create a new layer and go to select. It might be an easy way of doing this, but uh, this is just the way I do it. I'm gonna to go to select and inverse. And on this new layer, which I just created by clicking down here on the plus, I'm going to just fill that layer with white. And we're gonna turn it off before we save. So we're gonna add the, my name is Bill on here. I'm gonna hit the, uh, go to the little text emblem here or click press T on your keyboard, but over here, we press T and we type, and we use caps, my name is Bill. And I can go to edit, free transform, and I can just move around. Now, as before, you, uh, I do believe there's an option up here to link the proportions. So if I unlink those, I think I can move it around as I want. But if I just hit this link button again, it keeps it in proportion for me. So I can put my name is Bill where I think it is. I can make it smaller, move it down. Let's put it say about there. So now I can see that it's gonna miss the circle. And then I can actually go back down to my layers, create another new layer behind my circle. Pop my little black, black, black bar in there. Fill it in. Now let's hold down control, use some arrows to move it. Or you can actually use the move tool up here. A few, more, a few more things, bits and pieces in there. We're not sort of worried too much about how, the how-tos on how to design necessarily, but having that circle layer shows me, okay, this is exactly how it's gonna look. So I go to my layer here, which I use to create that circle. I hit the eye icon to turn it off, and now I have a perfectly square image I can use for social media. So now I can save that, so I go file. First of all, I might save as to save a PSD, and then I might go to export, save for web and save my JPEG, in which case I'd make it a different size. So at the moment, I think that one is pretty big. So 1200, probably doesn't need to be that big. So when I go to save for web, I might knock it down to say 500. Now I do have a list of social media image sizes in the description below, so check that one out. And uh, if you're gonna use this image for multiple platforms, just choose the largest image size. Otherwise, at the moment, I believe if you go to save for web, yeah, I bet, I bet uh, even 1024 or 1080 by 1080 is pretty safe. And I do believe a lot of these platforms will size them down anyway, but if you wanna make sure, if you wanna get it exact, so maybe no higher than 400 by 400, you can get your 400 by 400 image by typing it in your image size there, choosing JPEG or PNG, whichever is gonna be smaller slash whatever suits you best. Save your image and upload it, and that's pretty much it. So. That's how you can avoid the circle issue because a lot of people, uh, I know I've done it a few times in the past, and uh, I think the easiest way is if you can just have your design ready to go, plenty of space outside, much like this one before, where we're just, whoops, coming back, we're just getting our circle tool, going, yep, this is the part I want, lining it up, and then cropping it is probably the best way to go. So I'll give you one more quick bonus tip before I go, before I leave, and that is to use quick mask. So I hit Q on my keyboard, or I believe this is button here, on the with the little square in the circle, and you notice this outside area is in red. Now if I go to edit, free transform, as long as I have the proportions locked, I can actually resize and move that to where I want it to. So if I want to get it real tight, I can even hold down Alt and move it from the center. So I want it real tight, I stop about there. 
I hit enter, I click this button again to exit the quick mask, and then I've got a nice tight circle. I can get an image and crop. Another quick tip for you just on that one. So I hope you found that video useful. It's just a quick little uh, way of taking control of that ID photo within the circle. So um, yeah, if you want to see more videos like this or you have any requests specifically, please leave a comment below. Otherwise, give the video a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe. Check out some of the other videos on my channel if you uh, want more like this as well. Otherwise, have a great day and thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time.